We all want love, but most of us don't want to date to get it. Because let's be honest, dating kind of sucks. But maybe it doesn't have to if we actually know what we're doing. Hi, I'm Kira Sabin, and this is Reinventing Dating, a smart and sweary podcast for all singles to learn the mindsets and skills to date with intention and confidence. Join me weekly as I break down the science and psychology behind what's working in our dating culture and what isn't. Every week I bring a new topic, trend, skill, or mindset that can help us get out of our own way to learn how to date for relationships that we actually want. Because love isn't broken, but dating kind of is. But I'm reinventing it. Let's do this. Well, hello there, sugar pantses, and welcome to another episode of Reinventing Dating. I'm Kira, and we're back for our sixth episode in our current series of common dating questions through a modern and healthy dating perspective. A couple things to keep in mind about this series is I'm going to be answering some of the very common questions that I get asked or see most online, but I'm going to be talking about them through a more non-gender role, healthy science-backed perspective. A couple of reminders, everything that I talk about is about finding a partner, is about finding an equal partnership, not just about dating. I'm teaching people the perspective of not getting a girlfriend or not getting a boyfriend, but actually a partner, somebody who's going to go all in with you, somebody who's going to be doing this long term. So if you're casually dating, this information is still helpful, but this is really specifically for people who are looking right now for long term relationships. The last couple of days, I've been trying to figure out what my topic is going to be this week. I created a list a little while ago of what I thought some of the common dating questions were, and some of them just take more research than others. And this one felt really, really good. I actually want to tell you how I came about this and, and explain something in a different way that hopefully maybe makes this episode even better for you. I had a client reach out and talk to me about a new therapist she is seeing. I encourage every single one of my clients, especially if you're doing one-on-one -on -one work with me, to also have a therapist in your back pocket. I am not a therapist. I am a coach. I'm a positive psychology practitioner. I have a certain type of background, but deep inner child work and deep therapy is not what I do. And my client reached out and mentioned that she had said to her therapist, moving forward, this is what I'd really like to work on. And her therapist came back and told her no, told her that's not actually what I do. That's not something that I feel comfortable with. And my, my client said, kind of, what do you think? And I said, here's the deal. There are so many different modalities. There's so many different people, therapists and finding a great therapist for what you're looking to achieve. Cause that's really what therapy is. We're trying to maybe let go of some things from our past, heal some trauma. But I'm like, she's telling you straight up exactly what she offers and what she has to give. And if it's not a good match, okay, let's find somebody who is. And I think in those moments, and although maybe sometimes we're disappointed that it doesn't turn out to be, you know, that person or that doctor or that whoever would be professionally wanting to hire people. Sometimes people want to hire me for like deep couples work. And I'm like, that's honestly not what I do. And I don't think that you would get as much benefit working with me with that than somebody who specializes in it. So what this brought me to today was that I feel one of the hardest parts about dating is because we're so nervous, because sometimes we really, really, really want love and we almost feel desperate to date and get into a relationship. And especially if you feel pressure from family, pressure from friends, pressure from a timeline, pressure from all of these different things, we can get ourselves into situations that just don't work for us. We jump in and then we wake up six months, a year, two years later and go, oh, wow, 
Maybe that person's not a bad person. Maybe we think that person's fantastic, but it turns out they don't actually want the same things that I do. And I cannot even try to start to tell you how many times I hear stories like this. Stories of meeting somebody, liking them, even quote unquote falling in love with them, being with them, laughing, having a great time. And all of a sudden you realize one of you wants kids and one of you doesn't. Or they have different relationship goals. One person is maybe looking for poly and the other person is wanting to be a monogamous relationship. The thing is, is that I have no judgment towards any of these things. None of these things are actually wrong or bad, but we can get caught up in shitty situations or just not good matches for us and lose days, weeks, months, years to time with a person who is not ultimately a good match. And then the worst part is, is we live in some weird kind of fucked up shame about it. We feel destroyed when that relationship's over. And I'm going to be so bold to say that although love and human emotion and connection and attachment is a gray and complicated area, there are things that we can make a lot more clear cut that makes dating and particularly the beginning of relationships a lot easier. Because imagine if we were able to date in a way where we had information pretty quickly to make important decisions on whether to move forward with a person. Man, wouldn't it feel so much easier? So I created these eight questions a couple of years ago. My clients do such a good job at tagging me in interesting and thoughtful videos. And I saw this from, I believe his name is Therapy Jeff. Some people like him, some people don't. But I thought it was interesting. And he basically said, these are 15 questions, I think, that you need to ask before you get into a relationship with somebody. And I didn't completely agree or disagree with all of them, but I realized and agreed that the fact that there are some really basic, impersonal questions that we can be asking on the first couple of dates to get us vital fucking information on whether or not we want to move forward with that person. And the more that we can do this kind of quicker than later, the more that we can have our answers in mind and know what we're looking for, the easier this all gets. This is something that I think that in the ideal or utopian world of online dating, I hoped would happen. I don't like online dating. I just did a huge series on why. <laughs> so that. But if we were going to use online dating for good and not the evil that it is, this is where this would have come in. This is what I feel like should be happening on online dating, which is these really fucking important questions being asked and you just don't even see people who maybe aren't looking for the relationship you're looking for, who aren't looking for the same relationship goals you're looking for. Because we spend a lot of times being frustrated and disappointed and let down just by the fact that we're spending time with people who either don't know what they want or don't want the same thing as us. And we get so nervous to ask that we keep putting ourselves in these tough and shitty situations. And I want to erase that for you because at the end of the day, love is super easy. Relationships are pretty fucking hard. But I think that dating can be used as that tool to help get us into relationships that matter, that work, that are helpful, that feel good, that heal. And that there's a shit ton of love in because otherwise, what's the fucking point? To me, one of the simplest and smartest things that we can do to date better and get into better relationships is know what we're looking for. When we're in the, I don't know, like, what are you looking for? What happens is that lack of self awareness. That lack of maybe commitment to our 
values, our goals, our passions is keeping us in a passive space where we get ourselves in shitty relationships because we bend over backwards for everybody else. And then we get resentful, then we get angry, then we get frustrated, then we get disappointed, and then we don't have good relationships. So these questions just take out that scary piece. And when people are like, what's one thing I can do? I'm like, know yourself, know what you're looking for. Not only what you're looking for, know what you need to feel good on a daily basis and be able to ask for that sooner than later. And I just want to say this very quickly. Once again, everybody shares videos with me, all my clients, all my ex-clients. It's where I get all of the amazing content that nobody's looking at online. When I put it up, it's because somebody has shared that with me or I've tweaked it or, or things like that. But man sakes alive, the amount of information out there for women by other women, by men, by whoever, telling women what they need to do, who they need to be, how they need to act to nail a guy down or get him to commit or whatever is the most misogynistic, patriarchal bullshit I have ever fucking seen. And I am just going to say right now, that shit makes me sick to my stomach that I cannot believe the amount of women saying, women, you want a man? Here's what you do. And the next statement out of their mouths is guaranteed to act a certain way, do certain things that supposedly keep a man interested or get them interested or make you seem like a high fucking quality woman. I saw one the other day about these are the things you want to answer onto your profile. Two truths and a lie. Because then they win. And the, the, what they win is the date with you. Like all of it is game playing bullshit. If the only way that we know how to date or connect with other fucking humans for the most important relationship of our lives is to change ourselves, act a different way that isn't out of, hey, I'm trying to better myself or, hey, I'm making sure I'm not expecting somebody to text me 30 times a day when they don't know me yet and we're not actually dating. But when it's coming from this, I have to do it in this way or otherwise this person won't like me, this person won't stay, this person will leave. All of that is game playing manipulative bullshit and besides the fact that it is not an integrity to who people are it doesn't ultimately create love it doesn't create trust it doesn't create connection and that is what makes relationships go and evolve and stay for long periods of time i will say this once i will say it again i am here for love Everything that I am trying to teach on these podcasts is to get us to love and to loving relationships where both people feel loved every fucking single day. And if we are starting off in a place of lack, of scarcity, of I have to pretend I'm this way or I'm going to put in these quick and easy hacks so people fall for me and then will love me forever even though I'm not even being myself. It's not getting us to love. I'm not even saying it doesn't fucking work. I'm not even saying that like, yeah, some of the stuff might get somebody's attention for a short bit. Some of the stuff might trigger their attachment styles. But none of that gets us to authentic connection, which is the fucking point. All of these are games. None of them are authentic. And if you have to pretend that you are a different person and it's not coming from a loved or healed space, it's more coming from a, I'm supposed to say this or do those things, then you don't want that relationship. You don't want it. And any person who is an expert, who's a coach, who's trying to tell you that you have to bend over backwards, 
change who you are, manipulate a situation that somebody will give you their time and attention is setting that relationship up for failure. And they're doing nothing good by you. It just puts women particularly even more in that scarcity place. It puts us in a bigger fear place and it has us continue to make decisions out of that needy, insecure space of, please just love me. I don't want to be alone. Instead of, I choose you and I want to spend my life with you because this feels good to everybody involved. I can't say this enough. Get critical on what you're consuming. I don't think I'm the end all be all, but ask yourself, is what you're listening to for dating advice getting you to actual love? to authentic connection, to a relationship that can last? Or are these short little things that they're telling you to do to trap somebody into a situation where you and I both know that's never going to work if one person isn't being themselves? Okay, so let's get into these eight questions. I find that one of the toughest and most time-consuming parts of dating is just taking the time to find out if someone's looking for the same thing as you. Now, as I mentioned, I feel like this is what online dating should have been doing for us, but they basically, you know, turn themselves into the wild, wild west of romance scammers and we can't trust them. But one of the most exhausting parts, which can feel like an interview, which can feel just annoying is is finding out what that person's actually looking for. Do they want a long-term relationship? Are they interested in having kids? And that can take a lot of dates and even sometimes heartbreak before we get to that information. But really that's BS because these are questions that shouldn't feel personal, that shouldn't feel like rejection if somebody doesn't want the same things as you. These are just black or white? What are you looking for? What's your ultimate goal here? Are we on the same page? Because really in the rest of life, whether you're looking for a job, whether you're looking for a new pair of headphones, whether you're looking for a new supplement, we are going to look at the facts, look at the qualities, look at what's included? Do they have the qualities we're looking for? Why would we not apply that to our relationships? Why would we not apply just some really general basics to make sure that everybody is heading in the right direction? What I mean by not taking it personally and not judging the other person, because before we start this flirtatious banter, and you tell me all about your favorite foods and TV shows and childhood stories, are we actually looking and wanting the same things? Because you guys could be friends, you guys can be acquaintances, but if we're looking for a partner, having similar values and relationship goals is imperative to success, period. Also, just a bonus, this is an incredible way to weed out scammers, or people who are probably there just for attention versus intention of actually wanting to get to know you and date you. So they may feel a little scary, especially if we are anxious attachment styles. We are very good at not wanting to say anything that might push people away or have them walk away. We're so nervous about offending But if we're just going to get ourselves into bad relationships because we're not asking these questions, we're not asking for what we need, then that's really on us and we're never going to feel good. Because ultimately, real relationships take real conversations. They take courage. They take self-worth. They take self-awareness and solid communication skills. So this is a great way to practice that because it's exhausting to continually be talking to new people and putting ourselves out there only to be consistently disappointed with people just not wanting the same things as you. And we can sometimes waste weeks and months in that process. So a couple of basic guidelines behind these eight questions. And there's only a couple. And the number one is 
we want to give people a couple of days to answer. These might be great after a first or second date. These are something that I even think are probably okay to ask over text because we're not trying to put people on the spot. We're not trying to force them to answer instantly and then judge them for it. We are trying to get real, authentic answers so that we have the information we need to decide if we want to move forward or not. And next, you have to be willing to answer these questions too. You can't be like, just tell me interesting things about you. And by the way, I'm over here watching you and judging you. Maniacal laugh, maniacal laugh. That's all we're doing here. Everybody's answering these questions. And in fact, you might just want to answer them right away. You know, I'm asking these questions and and here's my answers too. And you can see if whether this is a good fit. And these shouldn't be vulnerable things. You shouldn't be diving into your history or your exes or your childhood trauma. These should not be things that you're hiding or embarrassed or have shame about. These should be shorter, lighter answers, possibly a short paragraph in length at most. I think one of the ways we are self-sabotaging in dating or just in general in 2024 is that we're almost embarrassed to say that we want love or relationship. We're almost embarrassed to say, I really want a significant relationship in my life. Because I see, especially as a former very independent woman, that is supposedly the more empowered place. And I'm going to call bullshit on that. I don't think, and they've proven, that the most healthy space is not independence. It's not codependence and it's not dependence. It's actually interdependence. And interdependence is just this. It's seeing the worth and benefit of having somebody in our life, but also being okay being by yourself. That's all it is. It's being able to enjoy both. It's saying I can take care of myself and my personal needs, but I also see the benefit of having a partner in my life who I can do this crazy thing called life with. So whatever the outcome of their answers, know that dating with this kind of honesty and integrity will only bring on good results. You'll be bummed if somebody who looks interesting doesn't want the same things as you. But wouldn't you rather know this info up front rather than in three dates or three months or three years? So here's a little script that I want to give you that you can actually cut and paste. And you can basically just start it like this. Hey, are you up for the eight questions? It's something new I found through Reinventing Dating to help make sure we're looking for the same thing. These are very important questions and they're not to judge or test you. They're just questions to help make sure we're looking for the same things or on the same page. Plus, it's an easy way to get to know each other and share what we want that's important to us. If you aren't sure of your answers, Feel free to take a couple of days and think about it. This is important stuff to me. And if it's not your thing, that's okay. But it is mine. So if you're not interested in answering these questions, just unmatch. And I wish you the best of luck. Now, if anybody started to get anxiety by how matter of fact I was in that statement, here's just a reminder. These questions on some level are very, very basic. These are the kind of questions that people who are over the age of 25 and are out there dating as grown-ass adults should have the answers for. And anybody who says, oh, I don't really know, or I haven't put a lot of time or thought into it, that information is just as important as the answers that they have given you. If you're over the age specifically of 30 and you think that you are looking for a family, a long-term monogamous relationship. We're looking for people who are also looking for partners, not just, I'm not sure, or I'll know it when I see it, or I think if it feels good, like I'll just go that direction. That's not helpful. We want people who are in this, who are willing to check it out, who are committed to the process of getting to know you dating you, possibly creating a relationship with you. And although it feels scary to ask people to share, the outcome when we don't do this is 
3,000 million times worse. Now, this isn't, oh my God, do you love me? Do you want to love me now? Are we going to get married? Are you going to be the father or mother of my children? That's not what we're doing here. We are literally just looking to see if this person is a good match. And we're not going to be heartbroken. We're going to be maybe disappointed when they're not. But that's okay because now you both know and you can move on to people who are available and a right fit for you. Okay, question number one. What kind of relationship are you ultimately looking for? Can you imagine having that information now? Can you imagine knowing that within the first couple of dates, how much easier things would feel? So ultimately, what kind of relationship are you looking for? That can be long term, that can be casual, that can be monogamous, that can be poly, that can be open, that can be not. There are a lot of different looking relationships right now. And I could not care less what kind of relationship people want. But if you're dating somebody who's like, I'm not interested in a long term relationship right now, when you know that's what you want, you are breaking your own heart. You're doing that to yourself. I'm so sorry. I know that sucks to hear. But by attaching and continuing to choose people who have told us that they're not available or they're not interested in the same things you are, when we don't listen to that, that's really harmful to our self-esteem, to our trust, to just our relationship building in general. Please stop doing that. And like I said, if they end up saying, you know what, I'm not really sure right now, that's information too. Because ultimately allowing yourself to say, I want a relationship and that's what I'm dating and looking for right now. That gives you such worth and power. It really does. So just being able to admit that to yourself and to other people is a clarifying and beautiful thing. And as my Miss Brene Brown says, clear is kind. And I fully agree. Number two. Are you interested in having kids or more kids? You want to know this shit. Because honestly, choosing to be a parent, to bring children into this world, to choose to not only bring them into this world, but raise them together with another human, honestly, should be a bigger conversation than we're even having about partnerships right now when we don't. And as kindly and sweetly and with a huge hug, I can say this, how many of you are out there right now co-parenting with somebody who is emotionally immature, with somebody who is never going to fully show up for you or maybe your kid? We can make sure that that doesn't happen again. And that's important. So if you know you want kids, asking that question. If you know you don't want kids, asking that question. I knew I did not want kids. That led to a pretty awkward but very helpful conversation that I had with Danny right away. Because I knew that if that's something that he was interested in, we were not ultimately going to be a good match. And I was going to be super bummed and super disappointed. But I don't want to take that away from him. Luckily, we were on the same page and we regularly are so thankful that we are child free. But if you know you want to have kids and they already have kids, they may not be looking for more kids. That's also part of the conversation. Number three, do you consider yourself religious or spiritual? And if so, what does that mean to you? This is a very big deal breaker for a lot of people. If you are religious or just somebody who really leans into spirituality and that is a major value for you, you're going to want to know that. Now, maybe you're not somebody who's religious. Maybe you're not somebody who's particularly spiritual. It doesn't matter. That's also critical information because if they are, and they're wanting somebody who shares that value with them. 
then you guys are going to kind of hit a wall over and over and over again that doesn't really ever get fixed. And these questions are basically just pointing to huge value differences that we may have with someone that we can just kind of get out of the way. We're checking for similar values. And and when it comes to religion and it comes to spirituality, especially here in America, that's a very big value and belief system. You need to have that information. And if you are somebody who is like, it doesn't mean that much to me, and they're like, it doesn't mean that much to me either, then great. That's also a similar value. You just don't want one person on one end of the spectrum and the other one on the other end because you are going to butt heads again and again. Question number four, how often do you drink or do drugs? Now, once again, this is not a judgment question, but it's really just to see if you guys are on the same page. There's a former version of myself that was a very good partier. That was a very good drinker. It's not something I'm really proud of right now, but I have had a lot of drunken nights in my younger days, but that's not interesting to me anymore. And when Danny, which we talk about pretty regularly, became sober in the first year of our relationship, I had to kind of look at my relationship with alcohol. With one person not drinking in our relationship, I had to look at why that was the only time I felt comfortable socializing. I don't personally like to drink much anymore. And and you know what? I take that back. I still love a good drink. My body doesn't and my hangovers definitely don't. For sure. But it's really important knowing where I am now that if I were to be single again, that I'm not interested in somebody who goes out on the weekends every weekend, that I'm not interested in somebody that's drinking three, four, or five times a week. Like that's just not a personal value I have anymore. And so those are conversations. And we kind of think it is like, somebody who socializes versus somebody who doesn't. But it's not. Also, is that person using booze or drugs as a way to numb, as a way to not look at their stuff? All of that is important information. And once again, it's not about judging. But if somebody's like, yeah, I love to go out. I have a big friend group. We go out multiple nights a week. That needs to match up with what you want and what you want for your future. Number five. And I feel like this is really important. Are you currently in a relationship, separated or getting a divorce? Now, I know that people love to bring out what something we all saw a couple years ago, I think, on the interwebs, which was, is there someone who thinks they're in a relationship with you? I am grossed out by the thought that we have to ask that question. If a person says that they're completely single, and then you find out that somebody else thinks they're in a relationship with them, that's telling you a lot about who they are and where they're at. Not everything, but a lot. And this is a controversial one. I know a lot of times people are like, I am separated or am going through a divorce, but our relationship has been dead for years. Our marriage has been over for years. I hear a lot of stories as well as justifications. But let me just say this. Of all of the people that I know, of all of the people that I've worked with, who have been separated, who have gone through divorce, it is an emotional process. There are things that are going to come up. There are feelings, there are emotions. Sometimes they're of failure. Sometimes they're of guilt or shame. There's just a ton of emotion that's going to be coming up. And if you start dating somebody who's going through that process, you now become an unpaid therapist, an unpaid support system, and it's not a smart or good place to start a healthy relationship. Ultimately, if you are somebody right now who is separated, who is going through the process of divorce or going through the process of a breakup, Do yourself a favor and give yourself some time to heal. Go to therapy. Talk to somebody who can help you make sense of what your role was and what you can do better moving forward. But 
I feel like we really need to look at somebody who just separated two weeks ago or even two months ago and is like, yep, I'm here. Let's try again. We can do a lot better than that. And I wish I didn't have to say this, but I've been hearing this a lot in conversations that I'm having. If you're meeting somebody on on a very first or second date and they're telling you how crazy their ex is, how much of an asshole or bitch or jerk or whatever, and specifically if they're talking about the co-parent or the mother or father of their child, walk the fuck away. That is a red flag. That person shows that person. That person chose to date them, have a relationship, and have a child with them. And now they think they're a terrible human? Okay, I get that. But ultimately, guess who's going to be the next terrible human? It's going to be you. There's a victimization that happens when people can't say, here's what I could have done better. Even if it's, this is the criteria I wish I would have chose somebody on. I wish that I would have asked better questions. No thought process into your role and what made your past relationships, dates, situations work or not work. That lack of self-awareness will show up in your relationships again and again and again. Every adult relationship, there is it takes two to tango. There's a reason you chose that person. There's a reason that we stayed with that person. And all of those things, if they're pointing to the unhealthy, need to be looked at. But anybody who's talking about a person that at one point they said maybe they loved, at one point maybe chose to have a a child with, if they're speaking ill of that person, that says a lot about their integrity and their emotional maturity. Pay the fuck attention to that. Number six, what's your number one deal breaker or turnoff? Now, how I identify or define a deal breaker is this. A deal breaker is not their haircut, their shoes, what they're wearing. A deal breaker is wanting and knowing something is so important to you that you don't care how cute they are, how much you want to make out with them how funny they are, how fantastic they are, that if you do not want the same thing, that it will break the relationship at some point. It breaks the deal. It is a deal breaker. So this is not light shit. It is not about, I don't like the way somebody flips their hair. This is about, do we want kids? Are we religious? If you are sober, somebody who drinks or does drugs may be a deal breaker for you. It's that fucking important. And I put the word turn off in there just because a lot of people haven't thought about their deal breakers. And sometimes it's a little scary for them to feel like having such guidelines or rules into place. But once again, these couple of deal breakers that you should have are the things that if you don't follow them, will eventually break your relationship. So we want to find, are they thinking about that? Are they putting thought into that? Or is their turn off something silly or petty or judgy? Number seven, what's really important to you? What are you passionate about? What gets you out of bed in the morning? So what we're looking for here is passion, similar values, What excites them? Do they love music? Do they love art? Do they love sports and they get up every Saturday to play basketball and they want to make sure they don't miss any game? What's really important for them? What gets them out of bed in the morning? We're looking for people who have well-rounded lives, who have hobbies, who have passions. You and your relationship can't be their only hobby. You can't be their only passion. Those relationships don't work out because we get in some kind of codependency. We get into something where we expect one person to fulfill every one of our needs, and that's not realistic or real. So we're just looking for 
are the things that get them out of bed in the morning, things that we can either respect, appreciate, or even just match. If they love to get up on a Saturday and hike, and you like to sleep in on a Saturday and drink coffee and hang out on your phone, I'm not saying either of those things are bad. But at some point, they might become a problem in the relationship. These are things that we prioritize. These are things that we value. And I keep saying the word value because I think values are probably way more important than what we have in common. Values are how we see the world, how we interact with the world, and what we prioritize in the world. So if activity and exercise is your value, it's not necessarily one of mine. But if it is, you're going to want somebody else who at least values that or respects your values. Maybe they don't want to get out and run the Iron Man like you do. Okay. That's a whole nother thing, by the way. But do they respect and value that you do? These things need to be on the same page or at least respected because these are the things that will change or break relationships. And honestly, if their turn off is something that's kind of jerky, that's good information too. And finally, our eighth question is just more once again to get to know them, to look for how they spend their days, what they value. What does your perfect day look like? If like next month you had a Saturday completely to yourself, how would you spend it? Are they on a beach? Are they at home with their family? Are they traveling? Are they watching their favorite movies? Are they playing video games? None of these are wrong answers. They're just different answers, but we want to be kind of saying to ourselves and have them saying to themselves, are there answers, things that I'm okay with? If that's how they want to spend their perfect day, is that in alignment with how I want to spend my perfect day? Because if it's an exact opposite, we're probably seeing some big value differences. And those are the things that do make or break relationships. And it doesn't have to be the exact same thing as you. And maybe, just maybe, you're like, oh, I never thought about a day like that. That could be fun. That could be exciting. You might get a little glimpse into who they are and what they love. And that's a great way to start conversations with somebody. That's also a great way to get topics going from there. These questions are about getting some very basic information, helpful information, but also just smart information. How good does it feel when somebody asks us, what does a perfect day feel like for you? I feel like they want to get to know me, that they want to see me, that they want to find out what I'm about and real qualities about myself and what is important to me. Danny and I, at the end of the day, we work really differently. He is a rule follower. I'm a rule breaker. He loves to schedule things and do things in a pattern. I am chaos and all over the place. But we see the world similarly. At the end of the day, things are gravy and, and, and groovy and easy for us because we're still looking for the same things. We both love travel. We both love animals and love spending our time. We've fostered kittens in the past. Yesterday, we went with my sister to meet my future senior nephews, Pepper and Ollie, who they are adopting as two 10-year-old cats. And I mean, I'll tell you, and we met this cute little kitten named Smudge, and it was everything in me to not want to bring her home. And Danny felt the exact same way, but we can't take on any more animals right now. But the fact that I have found somebody who on their day off is like, yes, let's go to an animal shelter and see cats and kittens and just pet them and hang out with them for an afternoon. And we both love that. Speaks volumes to our relationship. We very rarely go, 
I want to do this. And the other person's no, 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 no. We're just on the same page. And that's what these questions help you do. All right, guys, that's it for this week. What did you learn? If you liked this, if you loved it, please make sure you subscribe. Come check out reinventingdating.com. And one huge favor, please share this with the other singles that you know. So we can all reinvent dating together. Because when we know what love is, when we know our mindsets, when we understand how we work, we understand the skills, we can get in better relationships, period. All right, guys, I will see you next week. Until then, my sugar pantses, meet love halfway. Oh, 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 oh,